to go to find all of these is called shareislam.com. Then there's a drop down menu there that you can click, 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 and it'll take you to these other sites. Also, there's a drop down menu with questions that you can actually throw to the to the website. Ask a question and the answers come up. Well, that's the third time, by the way, Sheikh. It is? In the uh, how much do I got to pay for this? <laughs> 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 but anyhow, the, the point I'm trying to get at is I'm not going to be any further away from you than your computer. We have some CDs and DVDs online for myself and Sheikh Bilal Phillips and uh, from Dr. Jaffer Sheikh Idris, others who have been participating with us here on Huda TV, other television channels and live events. And what we've done is accumulated a mass of these uh, speeches and yeah. presentations, Most answers sure. to questions, lots of answers to questions. And by the way, another website we have where you can get a lot of wow, this. Wow. Is called <laughs> YouTube Islam. Mm -hmm. YouTube Islam. I've seen that one, Did Allah. you like it? MashaAllah. MashaAllah. I, I hope you say yes. <laughs> I'm in okay. trouble if you don't. Okay, Sheikh. Let me take another phone call. We, uh, we have another sister. We have Sister Wafa. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, Sheikh? Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi al Alameen. How are you, sister? It's very nice to have you here in Egypt. Uh, you're most welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I have a qu just a question for you. For you. Um, you, you talk about giving dawah for non-Muslims, uh, but uh, what about giving dawah for non-practicing Muslims who, who have already known what uh, all you're going to talk about and they abandon their religion and run after the Western... I, I think that's an excellent question, sister, and I have taken exception to what some of our brothers say. Some of them will say that we don't do any dawah to the non-Muslim until we have completed our dawah to the Muslims. And there, to me, I take exception to that because the dawah, the invitation, is always to the non-Muslim. That's who you're inviting. To tell a Muslim that you're inviting them to Islam is almost an insult. It is. I mean, if I say, well, I want to give you dawah, you're going to be like, hello. In a way, there is. Yeah, but what we're giving them is the reminder. Okay. To remind them. So it says, what to wasso bil haki, what to wasso bil sabr. And it's talking about adhkar and dhikr. And yeah, to remind each other is a part of Islam all the time. Yeah. But I want to do this in a way that I'm not offending somebody. If I come with the attitude that I'm better than you in Islam, I've already lost myself yeah. before I even come to their six situation. So what I want to do now, I want to say it in a kind way, in a, in a way that's almost like a question. Um, is it okay in Islam to be smoking cigarettes? I, uh, I thought, it, what, what's the answer to that? Mm -hmm. No, brother, it's, uh, it's makhru. Makhru, what is that exactly? Did, how did the early scholars understand that word? Do you know? Mm -hmm. yeah? oh, oh, they hated it. Oh, oh, actually, they also meant it was almost interchangeable with haram. Oh, oh, and how do we understand today? And blah, and let it be questions and questions like this. Now, for the one who doesn't pay attention to Islam at all, and they're really, they don't even pray five times a day, they're not really into it. So in this person, I don't even want to go and start arguing about a cigarette. I don't want to go out here and talk about where do you put your finger, you know, when I'm doing, this guy's not even praying. Why do I want to care about where you put your hands or something? I think what's important now to talk to him about is a law. What about a law? And we have a special website just for that called GodAllah.com. You can have this one. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I hope this answered your question briefly, sister. Okay, Sheikh, uh, there was a question when you were talking right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. The thing was about, uh, because you said the Prophet ﷺ was rejected by the people of Al-Ta'if. That was... Big time. Yeah, that was a very, I can say, left a big scar. In maybe in the heart of the Prophet sallallahu but he didn't respond with something similar. He well, asked there's, a, there's another example. Yeah, I just happened to think about. So when you say a scar in the heart, it just hit me real strong. Uh, another thing that really struck me in the very beginning, learning about the Sira Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is how he reacted when somebody he loved so much, his other uncle, mm -hmm. which is named Hamza. Hamza, his Hamza. Yeah, Hamza yeah. was the great warrior, right? Yep. And didn't Hamza go out and he was right on the front of the battle and, yep. and they, they're like, come on back, hang out with us. You know, yeah. no, I'm going to go all the way. And then what was the name of the slave? Yeah, uh, Habashi. The yeah. Habashi slave. Yes, Habashi. Uh, and he threw the spear and it went down and they said it impaled Hamza, threw yeah. him yeah. into the ground. 
And he couldn't even, but he continued fighting while he was stuck to the ground with a spear yeah. and then he died like yes. that. And then they came and they cut him up, they took his liver out, yeah. one lady ate his liver, stuff like this, they mutilated him, they, I think they cut off his nose, his ears, all kinds of stuff, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Horrible yeah. things that they did anyway to the, the corpse of poor Hamza, and how Prophet ﷺ must have felt, right? Then, when this same man who killed him yeah. was freed from those people, that's why he did it, because they told him, you know, you kill him, you're, you're freed. freed, you're not yeah. a slave anymore. What, what does he do? <laughs> he decides to be a slave to Allah and he accepts Islam. And when he accepted Islam, Allah forgave everything for this man. Yeah. And now he comes in front of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, accepts this man to come to Islam. Even though he killed somebody, and he saw it with his own eyes. Yeah. Watch this, he could accept this man. He did tell him, though, when you see me come, please move to the other side of the street, because it's still in his mind. Yeah. So we talk about a scar, I guess that yes. would be... SubhanAllah. Okay, Sheikh, the question, before I take more phone calls, is uh, when you faced moments of rejection, especially with Islam, how did you behave? Well, it depends on who did it, and okay. it depends on how they did it. But sometimes, it, it, to you, it might not seem like a big deal. To me, it might seem really big. And sometimes, you know, when somebody hurts my feelings, I cry, but I don't want them to see it. You know, I want people to see how I feel. And sometimes I get angry. And in both cases, the Prophet Sallallahu was allowed to cry when his son died, and yeah. he's certainly have, you know, emotions like anybody else. But we're supposed to be emulating him. And I have to remember to not hate people but hate the evil that they do. Mm -hmm. If I can get that, if I can just balance that in my life, then I can get along a lot better. And I hate it when anybody does evil. I hate it when I do evil. Yeah. That's okay. But to just hate people, then I wouldn't be able to forgive them like the Prophet Islam did. If they came to Islam, I'd still have the hatred for them. Yeah. You know? Does yeah. that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. But the thing is, would you try... Or Again and again to with that very person, especially if they are close to you. I'm not a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I will, I, will, I will tell you that in most cases, yeah, I will, I will try my best. But there are times when I'd go, okay, I'm not a prophet. I'm just going to back away because I don't want to wind up in a fight or an argument. Yeah. And sometimes people just say things that I I can't deal with. I don't mm -hmm. want to listen to that. And I think that's fair. I think to, to be fair to our audience as well, nobody's expecting you to be a prophet or an angel. You're a human being. Just but remember this, you need to move away from the conversation before you react like that. I mm -hmm. think that's good Mashallah. advice. That's a valuable advice, mashallah. Okay, before we close, let me take the phone calls. We have, uh, we have uh, another phone call, Salam. Okay, we have Sister Sally from Egypt. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum Sheikh Yusuf. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Most, most welcome in Egypt. Thank you so much. Uh, I read a lot about you for, for, for the past years and I'm amazed with all you did, mashallah. <laughs> Ask Allah to accept it from me. This is what I need more than anything. I mean, and my quiz here is about Christians. Uh, I'm, I always think, why, uh, what is in their minds? How do they believe in such a strange doctrine that is not illogic? Um, uh, even the priests, the Christians, uh, um, the preachers, uh, even the presidents of the other countries, how do they believe in such a doctrine which is not logic? Uh, can, any, can, any, can anyone say that God is a man? I don't know what is in their mind. Uh -huh. uh, what makes them feel that? Is it just imitating? Is it just following uh, the, the holy, holy people? However, the holy people, when I see them even in streets here in Egypt, I, I got astonished. I, I just want to run and talk to them and tell them, are you, uh, are you, uh, are you okay? <laughs> is your mind okay? Is your mind fine? Yes. Uh, that's my quiz. What, what is I, the problem? I think I Why? understand your question. Okay. I, Sheikh, I, maybe before you, you go on, let me take another phone call. That will be the final phone call for today. And then, inshallah, we can answer them. Mm -hmm. Okay, we lost the line, no problem. Okay, okay. you go ahead, Sheikh. Uh, the thing that I would like to address here, first of all, is the question has a statement in it. Yeah. When you start to point to people and say, this person, this person, they believe, they don't believe, I don't know what they believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and many people will say things with their mouth, but it's not necessarily what they believe in their heart. Mm -hmm. This goes for the righteous people as well as the unrighteous people. Yeah. Because I'm judging people by how they look to me. But I don't know what's inside of them. It may turn out that they're better than me on the Day of Judgment. That's why I said, let's learn how to hate the evil that people do rather than hate the people. And if, when you start talking about 
leaders of countries. I want to caution you about something. You don't really know them. What you know is what's said about them by other people. And that is one of the things that's very forbidden in Islam, to base your conclusions of anything or anybody what a third or fourth or fifth hand information is. The media, newspapers, television like this, radio, all of this is geared up. Like we're geared up here right now. We've got our mic set. We've talked about what we're going to talk, discuss. It. This is all done ahead of time. But in real life, that's when you can find out about people. I know about you in real life. I highly respect you. But you see me out here talking about, well, we don't really, this is almost like play acting. So don't buy into the media stuff when they talk about people. And if you don't know somebody personal and know firsthand how they are, the better thing to do is pray for them instead of praying against them. I want to clear that up even before we go to anything else. This is very key. You will not be able to do effective dawah if you are, in your mind, prejudging everybody, saying, I know how this guy thinks, I know how that gal thinks, because it's not right and it's not fair. And also it's not healthy for your mind. Okay, what I is healthy... Have, sorry, I think we have one minute to close. So one minute can, left? Maybe we can what is healthy is go to the website and get all the answers there and ask a lot of guys at shareislam.com. Go. Okay, brothers and sisters, uh, may Allah reward you for being with us. We thank Sheikh Husfestis for being with us today and thank giving us the way. time. Uh, inshallah, next week we will carry on with the events of the seerah. We'll try to live with the Prophet ﷺ for an hour, take an hour out, spend it with the Prophet ﷺ, see what he went through, what are the things that he experienced, and how did that build his character, and, uh, and how Allah prepared him to be the Prophet, the last messenger, to bring the light to humanity and hopefully by learning that we can follow his example and be a light to all humanity and those all those around us now i will let sheikh Estes close this episode i just with want to say one simple thing it's you you it's when all the news. prophet sallam was asked the question tell us something about islam that only you could tell us well, we have scholars and imams and muftis who could pull out volumes and libraries and begin to pontificate ad infinitum here the Prophet ﷺ says it in the simplest terms. To tell us something about Islam, only you could tell us. And he said, cool. Say, I believe in Allah. My faith is in Allah. And then be firm and steadfast on what you said. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah knows what's best for us.